Hey guys, I'm making this video to put some info out there on um, this beautiful frame I ordered from um, iCanCycling.com. There's not a lot of info out there for those of you that are considering purchasing uh, a frame like this one. So I thought I'd make this video to um, put some of the things I wish I would have known prior to uh, ordering the frame. So the frame itself is a full carbon uh, frame that includes the swing arm. It's uh, 150 millimeters of travel on the back, uh, and you can pair that up with a fork up to 180, anything from 160 to 180 on the front. I'm coming from a Niner WFO with the CVA suspension, which I always held in very high uh, standards as far as one of the best suspensions out there for climbing. And uh, when I purchased this bike, I thought the four part uh, suspension uh, was going to hinder my climbing, but that has not been the case. And even though I have a shock in the back that does not have a lockout, the bike climbs, I dare to say, better than my Niner. Um, not sure if that's because of the weight or just because of how stiff the carbon frame is, but that's been my experience so far. I um, took this bike up to Bennett Gap in Pisgah, and that was the first time I rode it. Aside from one of the rear pivot bearings coming a little bit loose during the ride, I didn't have any other problems with the bike. Um, after getting back home that day, I took it apart and noticed that the pivot bearings uh, needed a little bit of thread lock to and retorquing, and uh, the bike's been solid ever since. I paid about 900 bucks for this uh, frame, and that includes the custom paint job. The bike itself weighs about 31.6 pounds, as it is right now with the current configuration. I am by no ways I. Uh, light rider and I don't really count grams. I'm 225 pounds at the moment and I'm a very aggressive rider. There's a couple of things that I want to mention on this build, like I said, that I wish I would have known. Uh, and it mostly focuses on the suspension. So as it sits right now, the bike has a 210 by 55 Super Deluxe uh, rear shock. And if you go to their site and or any of the forums out there, uh, you'll see that it calls for a 22.2 by eight uh, millimeter uh, hardware on the shock uh, you know you can actually get away with a better fit if you get a 30.0 uh, by 8 millimeter 8, mil 8 millimeters being the width of the bolt that comes with the frame and a 25.4 on the bottom and uh, you won't have to use the spacers that are provided there's two right here and then there's two on the bottom they're a little bit they're about 1.5 millimeters each if you plan on running a longer crank set Anything longer than 170, uh, you'll probably encounter some problems uh, with uh, frame strikes. The current crank stick that I have right on right now is a 170. So if you put anything over a 175, you will encounter this problem right here. You can see how close it comes in contact with the actual frame. So we're talking about a few millimeters here. Another thing that I want to talk to you guys about is um, the frame state protector. Uh, this frame state protector came straight from uh, Specialized Enduro, the newer one, and it fits perfectly on it. There's enough room on the front triangle for a full water uh, bottle. And uh, the frame includes, uh, or it has ports for uh, internal routing. Um, there's actually room for your seat post cable to go down the bottom bracket and come up all the way up to your seat post. I'm going to be posting more videos as far as uh, getting into detail on the ride quality, how it rides, how it climbs, how it descends. If you guys have any questions, just go ahead and put those comments down below.